It is now my privilege to introduce today's speaker. Erica Dewan, a 2003 graduate of Swickley Academy, is a globally recognized leadership expert, corporate consultant, and keynote speaker, providing business leaders and their companies creative solutions designed to drive elite performance, improve innovation across generations and cultures, capitalize on the expertise of emerging talent, and prepare the global workforce for the future. Erica has spoken on international stages from the World Economic Forum at Davos to Harvard University, and her clients have ranged from Federal Express, FedEx, to the White House Project. Erica writes for the Harvard Business Review, Forbes, the Huffington Post, and her ideas have been featured in Business Insider, Newsweek, Teen People, and USA Today. She is a member of the Young Entrepreneur Council, Aspen Socrates Society, and TEDx Fellows. She was named a Young Global Shaper with the World Economic Forum. Before her founding of her own consulting firm, she worked at Lehman Brothers and Barclays Capital. Erica spent 12 years at Swickley Academy, serving as the co-editor of The Seventh Pillar and president of Future Business Leaders of America while in senior school. A member of the Cum Laude Society, she was the recipient of the Headmaster's Award. After graduating from the Academy, Erica went on to earn her BS in Economics from Wharton, a Master's in Public Administration from Harvard University, and an MBA from MIT's Sloan School of Business. Erica is joined here today by her parents, Dr. Ram Dewan and Dr. Neelam Dewan. Please join me in welcoming Erica Dewan back to Swickley Academy. Head, mass, head of school, Mr. O'Connor, Mrs. Sebastian, head of the board, and head of senior school, Dr. John Cassie, past teachers, Dr. Barnes, Mr. Connolly, Dr. Zawacki, Mr. Basinger, Dr. Ed, Madam Metzinger, Dr. Cucinata, esteemed teachers, parents, grandparents, families, and members of the class of 2013. It is a great honor and pleasure to be here with you today. You've made it. Whether you spent four years here as a high schooler, or like me, felt like you spent your whole life roaming these hallways and fields, you've made it. You've survived. Congratulations. Ever since I received an invitation to speak here today, I've been on a mini journey of my own, getting to know you, the class of 2013, and getting to know my younger self again. And it feels quite fitting to be here today, because today is my 10th year reunion. When I received the invitation, I was very honored, and I was also a little surprised because I wouldn't necessarily say that high school was the absolute best four years of my life. I think the famous poet John Ciardi said it best when he said, you don't have to suffer to be a poet. Adolescence is enough suffering for anyone. <laughs> but most importantly, high school angst, awkwardness, and uncertainty aside, I must say that the lessons I learned at the academy truly made my next decade the best of my life. And what I want to share with you today is that regardless of whatever type of experience you had, you are now being gifted with a blank slate. You can create anything you want. So today, I want to leave you with one key message. Choose excellence. Choose excellence in thought. Choose excellence in ambition. Choose excellence in innovation. And choose excellence in action. During your time here, you've had the opportunity to explore many interests and try on a lot of hats. But as you move ahead, it's time to pick a path 
and master it because that is what's going to allow you to create the kind of impact you were meant to have. Choose excellence and be excellent, which I know you already will because in the short time I have gotten to know you, I have already seen your excellence in action. As the smallest class in 20 years, led by a new head of senior school, Dr. John Cassie, you have been asked to lead by example. And because of that responsibility that you've shown, you've been given many privileges, like free periods and sign out times. But even more, your class, led by women like the inspiring Amanda Nosara, launched the Project Bataille team. This labor of love was brought to light by Amanda while she spent time in the Dominican Republic during her Global Studies Service Fellowship. While there, she watched the injustices of the day that were for Haitian refugees who had moved to the DR for after the devastating earthquake. After many of them had moved to the DR, they had had their birth certificates stolen and were forced to indentured servitude. And Amanda, as was said before, along with many others here at Swickley, founded Project Bate and have been subsequently been raising funds through big good sales, free throw shooting contests, and more. Kudos to those of you who have joined this important initiative. You also have wonderful classmates like Sarah Rooney, who put together the first ever human trafficking conference to educate the Swickley and greater Pittsburgh community. Sarah, this conference could not have come at a more important time in the world, given what's happened around the world in places like India and more close to home in places like Cleveland, Ohio. More importantly, all of you throughout your time at Swickley have been taught to pursue excellence in academics and sports in service of your peers. And now you can take that with you wherever you go. So today is your day. And as you look around at the familiar faces that you've seen every day in the hallways and out on the fields, I want to share the secret for the next 10 years of your life. Choose excellence and be the most inspiring version of yourself. Listen to what you want, not what your parents expect, sorry parents, and what your friends expect. Make your mark, take a stand, be controversial, and be a leader. Even though I've recently come to know you, I already feel very protective of you and of the optimism and adventure that you embody. Because I want to make sure that nothing ever vanquishes that. And you never let mediocrity become cool or fashionable. Because the truth is, you don't have time for that. You've got work to do. And each and every one of us here knows that you are up for it. Because we're a generation that came of age in the post 9-11 world. 2008 began what many economists consider the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. We are now living in a world that is politically charged, economically volatile, culturally divided, facing looming security questions. We are arguably the most informed generation and the first generation to really feel the weight of scarcity of natural resources. Social tensions are looming around the world, particularly as inequality and unemployment grows. One in eight global youth will be unemployed this year. And by 2050, the world will be hotter by two degrees. We'll have more insects and less agriculture throughout the world. You see, you as Swickley graduates are poised to respond constructively to this next set of global challenges. You bring new ways of seeing, working, and an understanding that things have to change fast. You're also the first wired generation. Ten years ago, I couldn't text, tweet, blog, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, Google. I could keep going, but I still use a collect card to call my mother. You have the capacity to attack the most daunting challenges and to do it in new ways. And here's the key. You don't have a choice. Because the world, as you and I know it, won't be here for us the way it was for your elders. What world will we have? What world do you want? You can have a voice in shaping our future. 
Now, in case you're starting to feel like I'm putting the weight of the world's problems on you right now, and I'm going to skip off this afternoon, I want to ease your fears. Because here's where I give you my best two tips for making the next decade the best of your life. Now, this is not the Holy Grail, and I'm still learning how to do this all myself. But my hope is that when life hits you hard, when it doesn't go as planned, and when nobody seems to be listening, you'll remember what I share today, because we can't afford to get you taken out. We need you to set the example for excellence. So my first tip is to choose to believe in yourself 100%. If you are a tennis player at the academy, you'll probably appreciate this story. But also, you might appreciate it if you ha there was something you really wanted to have happen at Swickley, and it just didn't work out, and you were devastated. I can relate. You see, I was an eager tennis player for four years at the academy. In my senior year, I had my heart on being captain. But I wasn't chosen. And at that time, it felt like the worst failure of my life. I was convinced I wasn't good enough and that I had failed. I'm sure you can relate to that moment. Maybe you didn't get picked or chosen for something you really wanted. Maybe some of you are sitting here wishing you had been accepted to your first choice college and have been negatively self-talking yourself for months. I can relate. I have that t-shirt too. But I'll tell you, not getting chosen as captain was one of the best lessons I learned at SA. It taught me about courage, and that sometimes I won't win. But most importantly, I'll never win if I don't believe in myself enough to keep putting my hat in the ring. I know that a lot of people talk about the importance of believing yourself, and it's not as easy as the bumper stickers make it up to be. You can't just believe in yourself when it's easy or comfortable. You have to believe in yourself when it feels like nobody else does and the goal you're going after seems too big. For me, growing up with an Indian mother who I'm grateful for is here today, who was a physician and spent most of her career raising her three children, I witnessed the challenges that women face balancing careers and families. And during my 12th grade at the academy, I organized the first women's leadership conference with Dr. Kuchinata. After the academy, I went to the University of Pennsylvania and decided to turn my interest in leadership into activism and became one of 10 national organizers to the March for Women's Lives, which was a national march in Washington, D.C. My proudest moment was the day of the march where I had organized youth wearing orange shirts and our orange blobs stood out in a sea of one million people on Capitol Hill that day and also on the New York Times cover story the next day. I had done everything from selling bus tickets to posting marketing flyers to speaking in national media. And later that year, I became one of 20 teens who will change the world in teen people and one of 15 students you don't know but will in Newsweek. Now I tell you this story not to talk about myself but to say that I was no more special than you. I didn't get that gene that allowed me to take huge leaps without fear. Taking these risks were required because I wanted my work to matter. And when those things drive you, you have no choice but to take action. So don't ever let fear be more important than taking action. Believe in yourself, take a stand, and then back it up. And for my second tip, choose curiosity. While confidence and believing yourself will be your foundation, Curiosity will be your growth point. So when you begin college, study multiple disciplines. Maybe at the academy you loved Model UN and soccer, or International Night and Student Council, or Seventh Pillar and Young Dems or Young Conservatives. Now maybe you will study economics with anthropology, French literature with science. Surround yourself by people who are mashing up surprising ideas because those are the leaders that will be driving innovation for our future. Do you love words? Do you want to learn new languages? Go to Asia and Africa. College gives us the best opportunity to bring different minds together. Take advantage of it. Because even if you're sitting here knowing that all you want to do is be a doctor or a lawyer, be open a bit. What other interests do you have 
that could get you to work and help you do better at work. And one more thing, write and blog about what you're experiencing. Leverage the tools you have differently. We've had a front row seat to watching the growth of Facebook and Twitter. We've also watched governments fail, companies change, and communities save lives and solve crimes in real time. That's powerful. Just do yourself and every future dream a favor, and don't post anything you wouldn't want your mom or future boss to see on Facebook. Fortunately or unfortunately, we've been the guinea pigs of making every aspect of our lives public. And I'm here to tell you that yes, it does matter. What you post, how you present yourself, who you surround yourself with, matter. Use the tools to show your excellence and allow your curiosity to be your growth point. So as you are leaving this beautiful school behind today, keep in mind that the success of your 20s is about your ability to be a starter. Please don't wait for leaders to pick you or choose you. Don't wait for them to help you start the next online app, venture, campaign, community group. Tap into your own leadership potential because the world desperately needs you. As I look out on this stage, I have an overwhelming feeling of optimism and it chills me to the core. You see, I know you. I see you. I once was you. There is nothing you can't accomplish. And so as you come up today and receive your diploma, take a picture in your mind of this great expanse and promise yourself that your life will be all about excellence. And when you feel lost or unsure or scared, which I'm sure you will, remember that picture in your mind and what it felt like to be in this expanse and let that excitement, that curiosity, that belief in yourself carry you forward. Thank you.